see my role um, in this book and generally in my work to be a bit of a demystifier on this region. Um, it's not quite as frighteningly, frighteningly intractable as you think. Um, one, one misconception um, I think is important is the one of ancient hatreds. I, I certainly, um, you certainly hear this a, a lot, but I, I do believe these conflicts are political conflicts. They're driven not by ethnicity or religion. Uh, Georgians and Azerbai Georgians are Christians, and Azer Azerbaijanis are Muslims, and they get along absolutely fine. So the fact that Armenians, who are also Christians, fight with Azerbaijanis is not, I think, an indication that this is a religious conflict. Um, I believe these, these conflicts were actually very much incubated in Soviet times um, when there was a lot of competition between different groups. As you know, the Soviet Union um, <coughs> sort of based its territory on, on ethnicity, which in turn led to rivalry and competition um, for the favor of Moscow. And, and when Moscow then suddenly walked away um, at the end of the Soviet Union, these, these rivalries suddenly be became much more dangerous. So that's one um, misconception I would like to combat, that, that of ethnic and ancient hatreds. Another one is um, frozen conflicts. I think I've maybe explained myself already quite well that, um, that um, South Ossetia was not a frozen conflict in, in 2008. Um, this was a thawing conflict, and, and therefore we should, we should not be complacent that these conflicts are frozen. So I try to ban the use of the word frozen when I'm, when I'm talking about these conflicts. These are simmering conflicts or smoldering conflicts, i.e. conflicts that we shouldn't just uh, forget about. The, the, these conflicts could rapidly rethaw. Another, and another misconception and cliche that I'd like to combat is, is the so-called great game. I don't know where this came from, but suddenly, um, somewhere in the mid to late, late 90s, suddenly people started pulling out copies of 19th century British magazines and saying, ah, uh, Britain, Britain and Russia fought for the resources of Central Asia in the 19th century. This was the great game. Now we have a new great game in which the spoils are the countries of the Caucasus and Central Asia. Um, it was a tempting journalistic metaphor, but I think it was very dangerous because it implies, one, that th these countries are not agents and actors in themselves, that they're some kind of spoils to be either won or lost. Uh, it kind of takes away any agency uh, from these countries. And secondly, it casts Russia as the villain. Um, and Russia can be very villainous. I'm not, I'm not denying that. But I'm saying that Russia also um, can be constructive and cooperative. And, 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 um, um, and certainly, there are different Russias and many actors in Russia. But to cast Russia in the villain as the villain in that sense becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that, that, you're, that you're, you're saying Russia is our rival. And Russia is very good at being a rival and a competitor if you want it to be. But if, if we'd said, actually, we can cooperate in these places, we both have interests, um, that would have been far better. <laughs>